So last night there were a New Mississippi, Iowa, Alabama, New Mexico, Montana, and South Dakota. So we're going to go through all of the primaries and talk about the most important parts of it. Obviously, we're not going to go through all of California's House races, not through all of uh, Montana State Senate races, probably just the important things, things that don't um, really matter to the national stage. We're not going to talk about, we'll probably talk about that in a later video with a state-by-state -state analysis, but we're going to talk about last night primaries and what it means for 2018 just based off the raw numbers and the type of candidates that are, that are getting out, along with um, in the future, I'm definitely going to do like the, an analysis of the California Senate race or an analysis of the California governor race, something along those lines, um, as you've been seeing in previous videos. But we're going to start off with the state of Iowa. So Fred Hubble winning the Democratic nomination. I really don't see the governor's race getting too close in this uh, scenario between these two candidates. Kim Reynolds is mildly popular. Um, and I easily see her, not easily see her, but I, I see how she could definitely grasp a number of those voters that voted for Donald Trump, but also voted for Barack Obama. And she's probably not going to lose them considering she had an uncontested primary. And there aren't many candidates who could kind of... Um, edge her out and especially someone like fred hubble yes uh democrats don't really have a shot in iowa as of the midterm elections but when it comes to a presidential level possibly but republicans have typically and historically done much better when it comes to statewide elections party registration getting people out to vote in off years and that's probably what they're going to do now but when it comes to the house districts there are some um closer districts that have higher democratic turnout which is good news and candidates that are typically backed by the majority of the democratic party uh, let's take a look at the House District 1. Um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name so I don't mess it up, but um, the Democrats doing a little bit better than you might expect when it comes to primary turnout and then going over to District 3 um, again. Okay, so my recorder cut out. Um, we're going to just talk about and pick up where we left off. So we're talking about House District 3. Again, I don't really see a possibility of this making a national implication. Yes, the state of Iowa has always been contested presidential election years, but Democrats and Republicans probably aren't going to turn this state to make a message against the president. They're going to turn to states like California, which overwhelmingly went for Hillary Clinton, states like New York, California, typical Democratic states where there are Republicans that are um, have been safe and now retiring, which could leave a possibility for a Democratic win. They're also going to focus on the Rust Belt, and Iowa is not one of their main targets. Um, and then looking at House District 4, the incumbent um actually pretty interesting considering how partisan this district is but twenty eight thousand votes for the democrats thirty seven thousand for the republicans um california we're actually going to put the last on our list to talk about going over to montana uh, matt rosendale at the end of the day won the primary very narrowly though um uh, against a number of other candidates and matt rosendale probably isn't going to do the best when it comes to unifying the gop especially with his policy that i really thought he would outright win i thought he would win by a considerable amount, but obviously he didn't, and he narrowly won with around 34% of the vote. Um, not good news for the GOP. John Tester being an incumbent who is known statewide, this just shows a further divide in the GOP. Typically, it would be better for an incumbent to be challenged by one person, but not one candidate who is narrowly nominated. Um, it's really not good when that type happens, and especially in a opposing party year's wave. It's possible in a red year wave where we could see um, a number of GOP candidates because they think they have a possibility of winning. Uh, Montana is one of those states where Republicans really think they have a possibility of winning, but with these type of candidates, it's not looking the best. Um, looking at the U.S. at large district for the House of Representatives, again, not the best good news for not the best news for. Um, the Democrats, we see 152,000 votes in the Republican primary, 110,000 votes in the House primary for the Democrats. So they're definitely doing a little bit better when it comes to primary turnout. But um, again, Greg Gianforte is probably not going to lose this House race. But again, not good news for the Democrats, considering they have one candidate who was narrowly nominated by around 34 percent. Actually, I think they were both nominated. OK, wow. So that's pretty interesting. South Dakota, Christy Noam, I can't say I didn't expect her to win. Um, she was probably going to win. I mean, she's the South South Dakota House Representative member, so the only one. So that's something that really aided her. Um, I have I had no idea previously who Mar Marty Jackley was, but Christy Noam is probably going to go on to the general election, easily beat Billy Sutton for um, the governor's race. And when it comes to the uh, at-large district, there were a number of Republican votes, 100,000 Republican votes, um, and it doesn't say the Democratic vote count. But um, I wish they would include something like that, but we can say probably safely say that a number of these races in south dakota are probably going to the democrats going over to alabama um i thought sue bokov would narrowly edge this one out um one second um walt maddox won the primary for the governor's race here in the state of alabama and of course Kay Ivey, the incumbent actually seeing a little bit of opposition so she only won 56 percent of the vote as the incumbent um <clears throat> i can't say it wasn't uh the best 
it wasn't the best for someone who was put into office and not first elected. So it is possible um, that she could do better when it comes to the general. But winning 56 percent of the vote is never good news for an incumbent. Uh, but it, considering that there were so many other candidates, we could see how you can make an argument that she did well. Um, so just looking at this, going over to the House districts, not much to note. Uh, not many Democratic candidates are competitive in the state of Alabama, pretty much holding its Republican identity. Same thing goes for Mississippi. There's going to be a runoff. We'll talk about that one later. Roger Worker, of course, winning the uh, vote. Primary turnout, probably the same um, as it was in 2016. The Democrats not getting the most and the Republicans probably getting the majority. And then when it comes to uh, certain House districts, um, I think this one goes into a runoff and it's probably going to go to the GOP regardless. But um, not much different than what we normally see in the state of Mississippi. This is something that we need to talk about. So New Mexico had a primary. Um, the governor's race is probably going to go to the Democrats, b making a flip from the GOP to the Democrats. But let's look at House District 2. This is one that I really want to talk about because House District 1, not really that important. House District 3, not that important as well. But House District 2 has a Republican incumbent right now, um, and they are retiring. So Steve Pierce is the incumbent from the House District 2, and there are actually more Democratic votes than Republican votes. So you have to keep that in mind. That's really prominent, uh, something that really needs to be capitalized on because this should be a Republican stronghold, safe Republican. But now it's at a point where um, the Democrats are getting more voters out, and this is a state that voted for Hillary Clinton overwhelmingly. So you can really expect some opposition from the Democrats in this state. I believe we just talk about Mon talked about Montana. Um, did we ever talk? Ooh, I don't know why I went to the New York Times thing over there. Do we talk about New Jersey? I think I missed that one. Uh, we'll talk about New Jersey right before we talk about California. Robert Menendez, not easily renominated, but pretty handedly renominated. Again, not the best news, um, but again, he's probably going to change some of his policies and gain a number of voters. Bob Hugan easily won the Republican primary here. Um, let's look at three of the House races. So District 2, a Republican incumbent, more Democratic votes than Republican votes. House District 7, more the Republican incumbent, more Democratic votes than Republican votes. Go to House District 11, Republican incumbent, more Democratic votes than Republican votes. So New Jersey is going to be one of those states that's a part of the Rust Belt that's going to be targeted by Democrats in areas that they know they can win and areas that were won by Hillary Clinton. And they're going to go there and take the retiring incumbents and make them look horrible. They're going to take the Republican nominees, make them look horrible. They're going to boost up the Democrats, and this is what their ground game is going to be in states like California and New Jersey. Um, New, we see it in New York. It's possibly going to happen in Texas. And New York are going to do a phenomenal job at this. I mean, you already see it in primary turnout. And imagine in the general election with a blue wave. If Democrats start expanding their lead, they're starting to gain back the generic ballot. Actually, just go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, the Democrats are now in a higher lead than they were before. Um, yeah, it's even higher than it was last night when it was at 50, 40, 45.9 to 39.9. So um, I can't say it wasn't... I can't say it's bad for necessarily the worst for the GOP, but they could be doing better in primary turnout. And when it comes to the California results, Dianne Feinstein easily wins a renomination in the governor's race. This is good news for the Republicans. They actually have a candidate. Pretty interesting, right? Um, but only 26% of the vote. Can't say it's the best news for them. Gavin Newsom wasn't the best candidate for the Democrats, but he's probably going to win in the general election. I can't say I see a John Cox victory. Um, we're not actually going to go through any of these House races here. We're going to go to the key races. So main takeaways from California and the rest of the states, Democrats are doing very well when it comes to turnout. Um, and considering this is an open primary, that's also good news. Um, but yeah, so California has a number of districts that are really important. So with 100 percent in uh, almost all of the actually all of these competitive races have a Democratic candidate. There was a point in time where there was a consideration that a uh, two Republicans could be advancing to the general election because of Democratic vote splitting. That was not the case. And Democrats actually got candidates. So Jeff Denham, um, considerable race against Josh Harder. Uh, he's probably going to win with 100 percent reporting. Um, a number of these other races should be paid attention to um, with Gerald Issa's retiring seat or other re retiring incumbents. It should be focused on. And then we go over to Iowa again. This one wasn't as um, it wasn't as competitive, but again, it should be noted with the primary turnout. Primary turnout should be noted here. Montana as well should be noted, but probably not going to see Greg, Greg Gianforte lose. New Jersey, again, extreme, very good news for the Democrats. New Jersey cannot be understated. We saw it in the 2017 governor election. We're seeing it now in the House election primaries. And New Mexico, also good news. So that's a recap of everything. Um, I'm probably not going to get to every point considering there were a number of primaries last night, but I had a live stream covering um, the primaries. So Thank you guys for watching this video. Comment down suggestions below, and I'll see you all tomorrow.